Did you know the definition of glaucoma is chronic and progressive optic nerve damage with subsequent visual field loss? And did you notice something's missing from that definition? Eye pressure. So if that's not even in the definition of glaucoma, why do we talk about it so much? I got these questions in the comments of my videos and it made me realize that there's a lot of confusion surrounding eye pressure and potentially some unnecessary stress related to it. So today I would like to clarify some things, let you know when eye pressure is a problem, when it might be a problem, and give you a basic understanding of what could be going on that may help you in conversations with your doctor in order to figure out what's actually going on in your particular case. At the end, I'll answer these questions to help put it all together. All right, let's get started. While eye pressure is a valuable metric in evaluating eye health, it can be a source of confusion. And that's because eye pressure isn't cut and dry. High eye pressure doesn't mean you have glaucoma, and low eye pressure doesn't mean you don't have glaucoma, and eye pressure that's kind of on the high side may mean that glaucoma's in your future, or it could mean nothing at all. If that has you confused, please don't worry because I'm about to break it down. Let's start by looking at a bell curve of how eye pressure varies across a population of people with normal, non-glaucomatous eyes. So you can see that basically eye pressures range between 10 millimeters of mercury and 21 in people who do not have glaucoma, with the majority of people being pretty average around 17 millimeters of mercury. And millimeters of mercury is just a unit that eye pressure is measured in. Keep in mind, this bell curve is showing people who do not have glaucoma. So the higher the pressure gets, the more likely there is glaucoma. And I'm going to break it down based on pressure ranges. And since today we're here focusing on glaucoma, I'm going to start talking about pressures in the high end first and work my way down. I'll begin with eye pressures that are way off this chart in the 30 to 40, all the way up to 80 millimeters of mercury range. In this range, you have acute ankle closure glaucoma, which I've talked about many times before. So I'll link videos below and I won't touch on it for too long here, but basically the fluid that circulates through the eye gets blocked and can no longer drain, but it continues to be made. So the eye pressure shoots up very quickly and vision can be lost quickly within a few hours. And this actually presents with redness, pain, blurred vision, halos around lights, sometimes a headache or even nausea. So this is definitely differentiated from other types of glaucoma and you'll know something's going on when you feel it. Another one within this range is neovascular glaucoma and this develops more slowly over time, but this is going to happen more in people who have a history of uncontrolled diabetes or high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease that has led to some sort of bleed in the eye and lack of oxygen. So the body has made new blood vessels to feed those areas that are lacking oxygen. These new blood vessels can grow in the angle that drains this fluid from the eye, causing pressure to build up very quickly, kind of similarly to acute angle closure glaucoma. Again, when we see pressures in this range, there's really no question about it. A uh, quick look at the eye and we can usually tell what the cause of it is right away. So let's continue working our way down to those eye pressures that are a little more difficult to understand whether there's glaucoma or not. The next pressure range is 30s to 40s, all the way up to 50-ish millimeters of mercury. A condition within this range is posner schlossman syndrome, which is an episodic type of glaucoma caused by inflammation. It usually happens in one eye at a time, causing some pain and redness, but this pain and redness is pretty mild compared to that acute angle closure glaucoma I was talking about earlier. It also tends to only happen in one eye at a time and usually occurs in males aged 20 to 60. So like acute angle closure glaucoma and neovascular glaucoma, it's a little bit more clear what's going on here. There's gonna be no question that there's some form of glaucoma going on. And there are a few other conditions that fall within this range of pressure or can reach this height, although not necessarily. Some of those would be pseudoexfoliation glaucoma or pigmentary glaucoma. In these cases, glaucoma occurs when the drainage angle gets clogged up by flaky fibrillar material in the case of the former and actual pigment cells in the case of the latter. When you compare those last two eye pressure ranges to the bell curve of normal eye pressure, you can clearly see that there's something going on there. 
Eye pressures in the 40s, 50s, and 60s definitely points to glaucoma. So let's get to the key part of this video, the main source of confusion. These would be the pressures that lie just above that bell curve or even within it. Let's break it down. Let's talk about eye pressures ranging from 21 to 35 millimeters of mercury. Many people think that if pressure is above 21, it automatically means glaucoma, but that's not necessarily the case. Sure, if your eye pressure is within this range, I'm going to be suspicious of glaucoma. And the higher it is, the more suspicious I'm going to be. And when it's up towards 35, yeah, I'm going to be pretty confident you have glaucoma. But the closer you get down toward 21, I'm going to be less sure of glaucoma. And here's why. It is not all about pressure. There is a reason that eye pressure is not a part of the definition of glaucoma. And that's because eye pressure could be pretty much anywhere on this bell curve or above, and glaucoma may still be present. There are four quick and important things I wanna bring up here about eye pressure. The first is that eye pressure is a risk factor for glaucoma, meaning that the higher the pressure is, the more likely you have glaucoma. Other risk factors include things like age and genetics. The second is that studies show that the most effective way to slow the progression of glaucoma is to lower the eye pressure, even if it was low to start with. The third is that eye pressure is read through the cornea and corneal thickness affects the pressure reading. So if you have a thicker cornea, the pressure reading is actually going to be higher than if the cornea was of average thickness. And if the cornea was thinner, it's going to be lower than if the cornea had an average thickness. So imagine that I measure your pressure and it's reading out 20, but then I realize that you had LASIK and so I know your cornea is thinner than an average cornea. That pressure reading of 20 is actually deceivingly low. If you hadn't had the LASIK procedure, it would have read higher and it would have been above that 21 mark, giving me that red flag about glaucoma. So you can see how we can't just leave it up to pressure alone. The fourth is that eye pressure varies depending on the day and also even the time of day. Eye pressure tends to be higher early in the morning. So if you came in to see me at eight o'clock in the morning and your eye pressure was 21, should I be worried? Because if I saw you at 4 p.m. that day, maybe it was less than 21. Those things can affect how we think about glaucoma too. So we have to look at the health of the eye as a whole, meaning focusing on that optic nerve, but putting all of the pieces together between the appearance of the optic nerve, the pressure reading, the corneal thickness, other imaging, and especially visual field testing to see if there's any damage there, which happens when the optic nerve is damaged in glaucoma. So now that we see that it's not so cut and dry, let's talk about these pressures within the 21 to 35 range. These can be broken down into two categories those with glaucoma and those without. Eye pressures within the 21 to 35 range more often than not do mean glaucoma. That's why 21 is kind of that red flag number that most people have in their heads. There are many different types of glaucoma and most of those will result in an eye pressure within this range. People with eye pressures in this range who have glaucoma will also have optic nerve damage and subsequent visual field loss, which are what defines glaucoma. The optic nerve changes and the visual field changes that align with the optic nerve appearance. Those with eye pressures in this range, but without glaucoma are diagnosed with ocular hypertension. This occurs when there is high eye pressure above 21, but no optic nerve damage and therefore no visual field loss. However, it is important to note that ocular hypertension is a risk factor for developing glaucoma in the future. And I understand that this can muddle things up a little bit. So I just wanna clarify that high eye pressure and optic nerve damage with visual field loss is glaucoma. High eye pressure and no optic nerve damage and no visual field loss is not glaucoma, that is ocular hypertension. But remember, the higher the eye pressure, the more likely glaucoma can develop in the future, even if it is years down the line. So those who have ocular hypertension may be monitored more regularly than those who have eye pressures within that normal range or 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury. 
There are also some doctors and patients who may choose to treat their high eye pressure with an eye drop to prevent from ever getting to that point of developing glaucoma, just in case it may be in their future. This is definitely a route that is valid, that is taken by some. It is very situational, dependent on the individual and various factors. Um, so that is something that you may see if you are considered to have ocular hypertension. Um, but not necessarily glaucoma yet. For eye pressures within the range of 10 to 21, surprisingly, there are two subsets within this range. Those without glaucoma, which is what we would expect, but also some with glaucoma. So let's break that down further. Based on the bell curve we've been looking at, that is predictable. You'd think that if you fall within the normal eye pressure ranges, you wouldn't have glaucoma, and for most people, that is the case. If pressure falls within this normal range, but glaucoma is still present, this would be considered normal tension glaucoma or also called low tension glaucoma because the eye pressure is within the range that we consider normal, but optic nerve damage and subsequent visual field loss still occurs. We don't have the best understanding of why this happens, but it is thought that reduced blood flow to the optic nerve and genetic factors are at play. We have found though that like other types of glaucoma, lowering the eye pressure from wherever it started is protective of the optic nerve, even though it was low to begin with. You might see how this could all make diagnosing glaucoma really difficult. As you can see, glaucoma can occur at practically any eye pressure and it can also not necessarily be present even at eye pressures that we would consider a high risk for glaucoma. This is why evaluating the other ocular structures, particularly the optic nerve, is really important as well as getting imaging and visual field testing. And this emphasizes the importance of regular dilated eye exams. Before I answer those questions, there is one range of pressures we have to go over really quickly, and that would be pressures less than five millimeters of mercury. Now, this is called hypotony, and it happens very rarely. It is usually a complication of something pretty serious going on and can occur if someone is over-medicated with glaucoma treatments or if a glaucoma surgery worked a little too well at lowering the eye pressure. And uh, why this is important is that the eye needs a proper balance of pressures to hold its shape and structure and to function properly. So if the pressure is too low, structures can begin to kind of collapse. And that could include a retinal detachment, a choroidal detachment, which is a detachment of the blood vessel layer of the eye. It can also lead to corneal swelling and the back of the cornea getting too close to other structures causing damage there. Also macular swelling, which is responsible for central vision. So this can cause a blurring of vision. This is why people after they have glaucoma procedures done are monitored pretty regularly, as well as those who are on glaucoma drops. Now it's pretty difficult to get to that level with glaucoma drops alone. And if you're being monitored regularly, it's probably not likely something that you'll need to worry about. Again, it's pretty rare. So let's answer some questions. The first one is, so worried about my daughter who is only in her 20s with high eye pressure, only a few points away from glaucoma. Please tell me she can live without progressing and have her eyesight for her lifetime. Well, they have a crying emoji and I can tell they're really concerned about their daughter. And I have a couple of questions here and it seems like this might be somebody who may be unnecessarily worried about this situation. So she's in her 20s with high eye pressure, only a few points away from glaucoma. That's making me think that maybe they think 21 is glaucoma, period, and that maybe the daughter is at 18 or so. If that's the case, Glaucoma is very unlikely. Yes, we've talked about the normal tension glaucoma, that, but that's not so common. And you know, again, it's more looking at the optic nerve. So if her pressures are at 18, does that mean that in a couple of years she might inch her way to 21? Well, probably not. So that's something I would definitely wanna clear up with the doctor. My other interpretation is that maybe the doctor mentioned something about glaucoma or about uh, that she might have glaucoma. So maybe the pressures were above that 21 range or there was something that was a little suspicious about it. And in that case, you know, there's a lot more to look at. If the optic nerve is healthy and the visual field is normal and the eye pressure is you know, around that 21 range or so, it's probably something that will be monitored more closely at first. And then once 
you prove glaucoma, you start treating it. Or if you can't prove glaucoma, then you start monitoring less frequently until you're pretty certain that there's not glaucoma. So I wouldn't start worrying about sight loss yet. I would answer those questions. Is it ocular hypertension? Is it actually glaucoma? Is there just a suspicion of glaucoma? Is she a glaucoma suspect? Answer those questions first. The second question is, are drops necessary if the pressure is 20 in one eye and 21 in the other? So this is that range right at the top of that bell curve where we start to get suspicious of glaucoma. If the optic nerve looks healthy, that's great. If it looks like there may be some signs of glaucoma there, visual field testing will certainly be done. We also don't want to forget about that corneal thickness. Maybe there's a thick cornea and the pressures are actually reading higher than what they actually are. And maybe if you had average thickness corneas, the pressures uh, would be closer to 18 or so. Uh, these are all questions that we need answered. Also, remember that eye pressure fluctuates throughout the day and day to day. So maybe if you measured them tomorrow, they would be a little lower or maybe they would be higher. It could go either way. This is why we typically want at least three eye pressure measurements before starting any treatment, unless it's wildly high and treatment needs to be started right away. I hope that leads you in the right direction and helps to pull these concepts together a little bit more. Remember, I can't tell you for sure, you know, from the other side of a camera, whether you have glaucoma or not, it's definitely going to be down to examinations and conversations with your doctor, but hopefully this helps you understand what kinds of questions to ask so you get the answers and the understanding that you're looking for so you can put the best foot forward. I think one of the morals to take from this story is not to compare. I love to see the community flourish in discussion about eye care. That's one of the really exciting things about having this channel is that people can chat with each other and um, seek comfort in people who are experiencing similar things with their vision and their ocular health. But it is important to know that one person's 16 is another person's 18 is another person's 21. You can have glaucoma at any of those ranges or you could not have glaucoma at any of those ranges. It is so dependent and it really comes down to a conversation and to gain a better understanding. Another thing to keep in mind is that eye pressure targets vary depending on the individual, often based on the severity of the glaucoma and the starting eye pressure. But again, comparing your eye pressure to someone else's isn't going to tell you whether one person's glaucoma is better controlled than the other or not. So try not to compare, try to seek understanding. I hope this video uh, pulls it all together for you and gives you a better understanding of what role eye pressure plays in the diagnosis and treatment of glaucoma. Comment if you have any questions down below, I'd love to hear from you. For more about glaucoma, check out this playlist here. And this video will walk you through what you can expect during the glaucoma diagnosis process. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and be kind in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again.